All right, guys, this video is going to be about the American income problem during inflation. And this is going to be a little eye popping because I spent a few hours researching American income and it is actually worse than what I thought. I said in previous videos that around 100 million Americans make $35,000 a year or less, right? It's, I was wrong. It's about 120 million Americans out of 164 million Americans in the, workforce, in the workforce. The number is actually higher. How do I know? This is what I did. But before I get into that, I wanna say thanks out, thanks to the Nerd Tribe and the people who are leaving the well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you people. And this Sunday, March 20th at 4 p.m., we're gonna have our first training. And I'll be talking about that because it's home economics. It is very, very important. I know this is something a lot of people wanna look over because they just wanna start their business, start making money, but the foundational aspects are super important. So the link is below if you wanna be part of that. And then next month, we're gonna get into the business building courses. All right, so one of the things I did was I sat down and I looked at all of the low wage jobs. I looked at food service. There's about 3.2 million fast food workers in America and most of them make under 35,000. Then I looked at hotel workers and this is something else. You know, it was a little tricky because I had to look for uh, people who worked on chicken farms and then farmers and that's like, okay, agriculture has almost 20 million people. Now this is the big, big, big sticker. When I looked at the number of people who participated in the state government payroll, about 24 million people are employed by the state in any capacity, whether you're a teacher, whether you are a um, bus driver, whether you're a police officer, whether you're a fireman, these are state employees or you know local government employees that come under the state. And there's like about 25 million of them and about 20 million of them, about 22 million of them make less, $35,000 a year or less. Now, what was eye popping for me was the amount of money, well, the number of Uber drivers. Uber has 3.9 Uber drivers around the world. Lyft has 1.9 million drivers around the world. I, I had no idea that they had that type of scale because when you get to a point where you literally have over 20,000 employees or people on your payroll or people that are contracted with you, you literally have a floor of employees whose whole job is just to monitor how these people get paid because there's so many. Literally, you, you have people working 40 hours a week, 160 hours a month, just to make sure people get paid. So that, that's, you know, uh, Amazon has 1.1 million workers. I did not look up Walmart, I should have, but I looked up retail because I figured that, co that uh, covered Walmart and that was about 32 million workers. 32 million people work in the retail sector and we can safely say 30 million make $35,000 a year or less. And as I started to, you know, cause I would re research and I would write down the numbers research and I got to 120 million Americans don't make 35,000. And I've got people who are trying to challenge me who won't do the research because here, here's the thing. There are many people who feel that that number is off because it doesn't sound right, but they have no facts. They have no stats. They have, they're, they're just like, hey, you know, that number sounds wrong. And I've had a lot of people quote household income. When you go to the Google machine and you put in average income, the first thing that's going to pop up is household income, not single person income. And a household can consist of three, four, five, six, seven incomes. Everyone that lives in that house. So this is where things get really, 
really, really bad. Really, really bad. 90% of these jobs are what I would consider a dead end job. If you're a police officer, you can maybe move up to sergeant. As you move up the ranks, management gets very thin. Like you may have, let's say a police force of a thousand police officers. The management uh, sector of those thousand police officers is going to consist of 75 top ranking police officers from the sergeants to lieutenants to the police commissioner. So that means that 925 people cannot move up. I mean, when you really start to look at these industries, Amazon, what are you going to do? You, you might be able to become a warehouse manager, but that's one of the things. Once you start to look at the management sector, because with technology, managers can manage way more people than they used to. It used to be a ratio of every 10 employees had a manager. We're, we're way past that. You know, that was way back in the day when we had shop foremans and when Ford built a plant. Literally every 10 employees had a foreman and then the foreman had a shop manager. The management structure is very, very thin. And that spells doom for um, the average American worker in the inflationary periods because there's virtually no way for these people to make more money. There is no way to make it. I remember when I was working in the lab, once again, you could work the bench and the lab, or you could be a manager. And there was only one department head. There was um, shift leaders, which was like maybe an additional three bucks an hour. So that's $500, that's $6,000 a year more than I was making. So you, you had a shift manager for each shift and we had three shifts. So there was only three of them. And then we had uh, the department manager, one of them, and then we had the overall lab head, one of them. So let's say we had a staff of about 65, 75 people, and we had five people in management. So one of the things that you got to understand, because let's talk about what has happened to the American workforce. Once we got rid of manufacturing, once we got rid of that, we got rid of upward mobility opportunities for the average person. My uncle Martin, who did not graduate high school, was able to leave Alabama, move to Detroit, start working on the floor of Pontiac and work his way up to department head, which was working on the online foreman, shop manager, another one. So he was able to move up six levels, be making six figures. And this man didn't even have a, a high school diploma, let alone a college degree, was able to send all of my cousins to college. And my Aunt Lillian, who was a math teacher, and they were upper middle class America. It was funny that my Uncle Martin, because my Uncle Martin, he had a little swag to him, he had a little swag. So he married a woman who had a college degree, even though he didn't even graduate from high school. That was kind of common. If you will notice in the 60s, a lot of people didn't graduate from high school. They would drop out, join the military, go get a job. And this is something. Um, years ago when I was selling office furniture, I was trying to sell furniture to Georgia Pacific. And I was in contact with one of the, um, she was like his secretary or his assistant. She was his assistant and I was contacting her and I was emailing her, but I would get replies back to her. And one day I must've called her at the right moment cause she was like, I'm getting ready to leave. So you're gonna be able to be talking to someone else. And she's like, he can't even read. I was like, what? She's like, no, he can't read. 
you know, he's like 70 years old. He came up through the old school. This guy started literally working in the paper plant and he worked his way up to vice president. And this was as recent as I was selling office furniture. Let's see. Um, two, th late nineties. So that meant that he came in to Georgia Pacific in the sixties, which at the, was at a time when people without high school diplomas, people who could not even read could get in the workplace show the people that they were working for that they were hardworking, dedicated, dependable, and they can work their way up. That is gone. That is gone for even a person with a college degree. That is gone. One of the things that I used to do when I was a petty patty, I would go out to restaurants and I would be talking to the server or something because you know, here's a little bit about my background. I did go to college, but I didn't graduate. I dropped out my junior year and I never went back. And I, it just tickled me because I was a patty patty to no end that I would go to all of these restaurants, the high end places, the bartender would have a degree, the server would have a degree. Let me say that again. Bar, average bartender salary is $28,000. I looked it up today and average servers make 25,000. So these people have degrees for jobs that don't need degrees. And then it was kind of popular because typically you would have people who were going to college, they would work in a restaurant or they would work retail. And this is something else that's happening with retail. And this is one of the reasons that people don't make any much money. There is what's called just in time staffing software. Everyone, Victoria's Secrets, uh, Macy's, everyone uses this. So it is only literally a handful of retail employees that get a full 40 hours. Everyone's coming in for these trunicated four to five hour shifts and essentially opening, since there's not a lot of traffic in the store at opening, they only may have one or two people in the store. And then due to this predictive analysis software, they will staff up for the peak times when it gets busier. So they won't have people just sitting around with nothing to do getting paid. And this is one of the reasons that a lot of people who are in retail get stuck with part-time employment. And once again, I didn't even look up the number of part-time employees in the US because they for damn sure make less than 35,000. And I guarantee you that if I look that up, you know what, hold on a second. I'm about to go look that up so I'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I am so glad I did that. Remember, there is 164 million people in the American workplace. Take a wild guess how many of these people are part-time employees? How many of these people are part-time employees? Because I just told you that 120 million people made less than 35,000, right? Well, guess what? There's 26 million part-time employees in 2020 in the United States. So that means that literally 150 million people out of 164 million make less than 35,000 a year. Google it, go to the Google machine and look up the number of full-time employees and then look up the number of part-time employees. Once again, 
All you folks who don't want to believe that so many people are not making $35,000 a year, I assure you that if you do the research versus coming up here with a very, cause like it took me a few hours to get all this data. It took me a few hours. And if you want to do proper research and crunch the numbers like I did, cause like I said, it just hit me. Cause you know, it was like, cause I looked at teachers, average income for a teacher is like 54,000. The average income for a nurse is about 50, 55,000. And these people, and there's like 1.1 million nurses. So when you start to get into the upper incomes, there's only 14 million, 14 million Americans making over $50,000 a year. 14 million. 14 million. And when you start to look at income uh, stats of people who file, like once again, once you start to get to the top of the income scale, there is income growth. These people can go from 100 to 150 to 200,000 because they're in fields with upward mobility. Whereas the vast number of Americans, the rank and file of Americans are in jobs with no career progression, no opportunity to make more money, no opportunity to advance, no opportunity to get promoted because the management structure is very thin. I just gave you an example and this was, it's probably worse today. It's probably worse today that a lab can have like 70 employees and have five people in management. It's probably worse today. This was back in the nineties. So once again, looking at the numbers, because here's the thing, inflation is not going away. Uh, today I went ahead and I got gas. Like normally I just get gas. I don't really pay attention to the price of gas. I know that's a luxury because I just put my credit card in there, fill up, go about my business. At the moment, to get premium gas, I got premium gas this morning, it was already above $5. It was like $5.46 for premium gas. So I'm gonna have to redo that video and talk about $7 per gallon gas, which right now, currently, we have the highest price of gas in history. And as some of the people in the well-constructed comment section was pointing out that so many things that we use are made of petroleum. So this camera, the plastic in this camera was made from oil. The plastic from that camera, uh, the plastic for the blender, the plastic for my coffee pot, the plastic on my tripod, my stormtroopers, all this stuff was made from petroleum. And as the price of petroleum goes up, so does the cost of the manufacture of these items. So looking at the numbers, it is way worse than what I originally thought. It was much worse than I could have ever considered because, you know, I was just spitballing. And if you're not familiar with the term spitballing, it's just taking a lot of data and making an educated guess. I did not dive into the numbers like I did today because hundred and let's just go ahead and say 145 million Americans make less than $35,000 a year. That is staggering. And I know you're like, who's driving all of these Teslas? Tesla produced 975,000 Teslas. Okay. And they didn't just sell all those Teslas here in the United States. They sold these Teslas around the world. So looking at, let's just say there's 20 million people in America who can afford a Tesla. That, that's plenty. I mean, the, you know, they're, they're like there's a lot of people who could afford a Tesla who didn't buy a Tesla. So who are all these people driving these Rolls Royces and Lambos? Once fun fact, 
They don't make that many Rolls Royces per year. They might make 2,000. Seriously, 1,500 to 2,000 Rolls Royces. I, I, I'm, I will fact check that. And I know for a fact that when it comes to Ferraris and Porsches, they don't make that many. Like I've got, I ordered, uh, well, I didn't actually order. What I did is I bought a position to wait in line to get my new Porsche to order. I, I had to buy a spot to wait in line for an allocation to get a Porsche. I, I haven't even ordered it yet. Probably be April before they like, hey, you can come in and order your car. And I had to do that um, like in October. So I can tell you that you will see these Porsches, you will see these Bentleys, you will see these Rolls Royces, you will see these Lamborghinis. I'm telling you, um, Porsche, Mercedes Benz, BMW, Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, McLaurin, I think McLaurin, McLaren, McLaren, GM makes more cars than all of those high-end car dealerships combined. GM makes more, Volkswagen, which owns Porsche, makes more. Uh, GM, Volkswagen, Ford, each one of those companies by itself produces more companies than cars than BMW, Rolls-Royce, all, because they don't make that many. I know here on the YouTubes, there's a number of car channels, there's a number of people who have these cars, and you would feel, but let's, let's go ahead and talk about this. A number of these people who have these cars have used cars, because the thing is, they don't make that many, so a used Ferrari still sells for a pretty penny. I currently could sell my 911 for, for about, 20,000 more than what I paid for it because it has low miles. I can currently sell that. So there are not that many cars in that market for the number of people who have the ability to buy them. So the luxury car, like the Bentleys, the Ro that market isn't flooded because there's the, there's not enough cars for the people who want them. So I know what me coming here and saying that 140 million people make, um, you know, $35,000 a year or less. And you're like, who's buying all these million dollar houses. And I guarantee you, once you look into the numbers, once again, at the top is, it's not flooded. It's not saturated. There are more people with the money to buy a Rolls Royce, to buy a million dollar house than the market has on it. So that's why these markets seem to be like, it, you know, on YouTube and Instagram, you would assume that everyone's a millionaire. Uh, everyone has all this access because, you know, you'll hear this guy's like, hey man, yeah, I ordered my Porsche and I'm waiting on it. And here's the thing, and let me go ahead and make a little detour. Uh, the top 1%, the top 10% of YouTubers make 90% of the money. The top 1% makes 90% of that money. So if you're looking at a YouTuber who has 300, 400, 500,000 subscribers, be rest assured that this YouTuber is probably clearing 250 to 300,000 a year. So that's a lot of cash for someone who isn't working full time, who isn't working full time. So. Once again, when you look at American income during this inflationary period, because inflation is going to keep going up, it's going to keep going up, it's going to keep going up, and it's not going to abate anytime soon. So when you look at the American workforce and you look at the opportunities for income advancement, they are simply not there. Now, I have some people who consistently hammer me in the comments talking about, man, I, all this doom and gloom. Can you come up with some solutions, man? Can, you know what? Go back and look at my archives. I've got 4,000 videos and uh, 3,000 of them deal with solutions. 
So stop being lazy like the nerd tribe, the smart people who lead the well-constructed comments. Many of these people have figured out how to watch the older videos. So that's what you should do because this channel is about the broader economy. It's not about some quick, simple, easy little solution that's gonna, you can snap your little fingers and it could be all good and you don't have, no. I ain't, I'm not gonna lie to you like that because, you know, let's talk about solutions. Start a business. That's a solution that a lot of you don't will hear. And when people are talking about solutions, they're talking about hacks or simple things that don't require that much from them that they can do to improve their position and improve their chances. Uh, I'm about to give you the solution. The next phase, start a business. Right now, the average American can start an eBay business today and start this business with virtually no money, just literally go around your house, find stuff you don't need, and sell that first to create your seed money. And then be off to the races. Like, I have sold about $40,000 worth of stuff on eBay in the last six months. And I've upgraded my camera gear. This is a fancy, this is a Canon EOS R, and this is a 1.2 lens. Whenever I shoot with this camera, I am usually much closer in the frame, and this is very blurry in the background because that 1.2 aperture gets me that. So this was an upgrade, and once again, let's go ahead and talk about this. This camera is free. This camera and lens cost 5,200, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. But this camera and lens, this camera and lens costs, I know, over 5,000. And I think the camera was 1,800, and the lens, this was like 4,500. And these cameras and stuff are free. And you're like, how can they be free? I'm gonna tell you. And this is solution time. Start a business so you can buy stuff and deduct that stuff off your taxes because this is a this is this is a forty five hundred dollar tax deduction. Now here's something that I do on the regular. At some point in the future, I'm going to sell this camera and I'm going to sell this lens, and I'm not going to take it off my taxes because I, I can only get that one deduction. So. I know from experience of selling this stuff, like I told you, it cost me uh, $4,500. So I can use this camera to make money and then sell this camera and get 50 or more percent of what I paid for it. Like when I sold this camera, these cameras are $3,800, almost $4,000. I sold a broke one of these for $2,900. So I got, and I don't even think I paid $3,800. I think I paid $3,200 for this because inflation and these cameras became really scarce. Like it's hard to get one. Um, when I ordered this camera, I thought I was ordering it because they had it in stock and it was on back order. And this camera actually came in two days after I ordered it, and then they shipped it to me two days later. So once again, you're never going to escape the crushing pressure of inflation working a regular job. It's never gonna happen. You're never, you're always going to be having to ask yourself, do I fill up gas? Or do I buy groceries? Because the, the crippling force of inflation, and someone said inflation was a scam. Inflation, you know, we live in a capitalistic society and inflation's a scam and people are taking advantage. Um, no, inflation isn't a scam. Inflation, when I was a kid, the same gallon of gas that cost me $5.45 today was costing like 60 cents. So inflation is real. And inflation is going to keep happening. Inflation is going to keep going up. 
Inflation is never ever going to, it's going to maybe not go up as fast because one of the things that I'm seeing, because every now and then on Zillow, I look at home rentals and the inflation price for home rentals and Zillow has a Zillow score for what the home should rent for and then there's the actual rent. And the Zillow score has gone up. I am seeing houses. I left a house that was 5,000 square feet, okay? We're sitting on two acres. It cost me 3,500 paying the mortgage. I am seeing people rent houses half that size for 4,500 to 5,500 per month rent. Now, once again, ask yourself, who's renting these houses. When you get to the top of the market, it is not as flooded as the low end of the market. It's not like when I was buying my 911, Porsche didn't have that many. And this was 2020. See, one of the things you have to understand is a lot of the people on Instagram and YouTube are tricking. They're, they're buying used cars because they can't buy the new one, number one, they don't have the money, and number two, the new ones are already spoken for. Certain models of cars like the Lamborghini Urus, um, they were really hard to get because people were ordering them and paying for them in cash before Lamborghini could make them. So when you, you're looking at the, the top end of the market, you cannot look at the top end of the market in the same manner that you look at the lower end of the market. Like right now, I am seeing houses going for a million five. I'm seeing price reductions. It's like price reduced 100K because that market is totally different than the bottom market. It's totally different. And you, you want to look at the market as if it's the same without the nuances and the clarity that you need to put to the upper end market because this is one of the things, this is why I think that so many people are finding it hard to believe that, that so many people don't make so much money because they're looking at the top end of the market. And this is something that a friend of mine pointed out, and this is something that I noticed as well. Remember the Ford commercial where the guy comes out and they're in front of a modern house and he buys a red pickup truck for himself and he buys her an SUV and she runs to the SUV and she says, I love it. And he's like, well, I got you. She's like, I love it. I love it. Right. All right. If you know anything about modern houses, cause that's kind of my jam. The house they were standing in front of was 1.5 million or greater. If it was in California, that was a four or $5 million house. But what you will see in these commercials, People who are living an upper middle class, an upper to uh, an upper middle class to rich lifestyle, is presented to the masses as average and normal. Like right, once again, you could probably find that commercial here on YouTube. It's a Ford commercial or a GMC commercial. Uh, it's a guy. Both the guy and the girl have dark hair, and he he buys these two. You know, and I want you to think. How many people can afford to buy not one, but two cars? Because she didn't know, which means he bought both these cars in his name. The average person can't do that. One of the biggest problems that I'm having is people want my more expensive cars and the bank won't finance them because they have too many miles. So I had some cars, I just sold the Carvana. I, like I said, I sold some cars to Carvana and I took a hit, but that was the only way I was going to sell those cars because they had too many miles for an average person to get financed. But once again, you know, many of you want to dispute my numbers. I challenge you to sit down and do the research and to spend hours crunching up numbers, looking up the number of people who work in algo culture, looking at the number of people who work in, um, Uber and looking at the number of people who work for state government and the number of people who work these low wage jobs. Go ahead. It's going to take you a few hours 
if you know how to do the statistical research accurately. It may take you all day because I knew what to look for. I knew what to look for. I knew what search queries to put in because you got to put the right search queries in. But the recession in 2023 is on. The recession is, is, is on. It's, it's cooked in. It's baked in. We're past the point of no return. The recession is going to come. And one of the things, like I said, you know, getting back to solutions. Many of you want a simple, easy, um, relatively painless solution. I don't have any of that. Start a business, start a business, start a business, start a business. That's the solution. That is the only way that you're going to be able to deal with this. And for the next decade, once again, if you know statistics and you look up, typically when people take an income hit, it impacts them for 10 years or more. So if you want to actually get ahead, if you want to actually progress, if you want to make money, start a business. And yes, we have a recession, which is the best time to start a business because you already know that it's gonna to be tough. You're gonna to have to hustle. You're gonna to have to make some moves. You're gonna to have to be a nimble little bear dancing in the woods. You, you already know this. And number one reason the stir business in the recession is a good thing is everything is on sale. People are on sale. Warehouse space is on sale. Office space is on sale. Goods are on sale, everything except gas. Let's talk about that. The price of gas is not going down anytime soon because of what's going on with Russia, Ukraine and around the world and the way that the markets are so interlaced. Um, it's not going down anytime soon. Rent is not going down anytime soon. I do feel that the price of houses will take a reset and I don't think they're going to like crash like they did in 2008, 9, 10, 11 and 12 but there will be an adjustment in the prices going forward. I don't think that's going to happen in 2022. I think it's going to happen in 2023, 2024, 2025. But if you want to position yourself to thrive in these re re recession, well, re inflationary period, start a business. You know, a lot of people are talking about solutions, solutions. And I think a lot of people are trying to cheat. They're looking for these simple, easy. Look, let me just go ahead and give you. There's no simple, there's no easy, there's no painless, there's no quick solution. There's no quick fix to this. There's none. I've been doing this 25 years. I've been doing it 25 years, and this is why I'm in the position that I'm currently in, because I've been doing this business thing not trying to rent seek, not trying to figure out some way where I can get a lot of money with little time and little effort. YouTube is running on those two premises, little time, little effort. And then you can get all this money and have all this time to hang out with Big Booty Betty, have all this time to go to the lake, have all this time to hang out on the boat and just chill. Um, it ain't happening. You got two choices. You can prepare yourself. You can um, do what you need to do to position yourself where you can thrive during this inflationary and recessionary period. Or you can just keep your job and hope and pray that you keep your job during this period and that you don't get fired. And you can hope and pray and you can dial back your spending and live like a monk. You can do that. That's on the options table. That's doable. That's something you can do. You can do that. But once again, if you want to live that life, if you want to create that, start a business. And next month, like right now, um, Sunday, March 20th, we're going to be doing home economics. What is home economics? Home economics is the foundational aspect of your personal finance before you start a business, 
before you start making more money. Because there are many, many business owners who started the business and the business was successful, but because they had bad money management habits, um, they ran into some problems. They ran into a situation where the business had to close, not because the business wasn't a good business, it's because the owner couldn't manage the money. So this is why home economics is gonna be an important part of the next thing that I'm gonna build out. And once again, the link is below, you can get in on it. And hopefully you will get on it because you know this is the not sexy, not um, earth shattering, not the um, quick, sexy, super fast. This is where true success is birthed. It's birthed in the hard work. It's birthed in the dedication. It's birthed in doing what is necessary. That's where true success is born. Because once again, looking at American income numbers is depressing. It is depressing. I did not know, like I said, I assumed that 100 million people out of the workforce, of because I knew the workforce was 160. The workforce is now 164 because it grew a little bit, but 140 million Americans make less than $35,000 a year. And that explains why we see everyone trying to do credit card financing, why all of these people are hoping and praying that I'm a dealer so I can offer them some financing to buy these cards. And once again, it ain't, it ain't happening, man. It ain't happening. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you in the next one.